Hey everyone, you might recognize me and Eric here from the Nintendo Prime Podcast. I just want to let you know before you get into this segment that this merchandise you see on our shirts and on our cups and on anything else you ever see with Nintendo Prime brandy on it, you can get in the description below. You can also get the full audio podcast not segmented in the description below. And if you would like early access to our podcast, please go over to patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. For $5 a month, you gain early access to the full audio podcast. And well, Mr. Eric, what do you get for $20 a month? Ooh, you get to join us on a podcast. That is right. So, if you would like to ever be on the Nintendo Pride Podcast, get your voice in front of thousands of other Nintendo fans out there. You know what to do. Hit up that $20 tier on Patreon. Anyways, folks, on to the episode. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 36. And we have, again, some special guests. First, we're going to introduce Nathan from Star Dive Studios. Uh, he's actually one of our Patreon backers of our $20 tier, which is really why he's on here. Interesting enough, I just realized today that you're a dev. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, not, it's not like I know. It's not like I went to this deep-seated research with you in the past. No, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, his studio, at least from what I read on Twitter, seems like it, it looks like a mixed bag of everything, games and... Uh, yeah, we're trying to do multimedia. Multimedia? Nice. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, thank you so much for your support. Uh, it's always appreciative because it makes the things like this podcast happen every single week. And by special request from our fan base, believe it or not, Bob Wolf from the Wolf Den is here. Hey, hello, <laughs> hello, how are you? Quite literally, I asked you to be on this podcast because I was doing a live stream. People were like, "Hey, you need to get him on your podcast." And I'm like, "All right, uh, I don't know why." <laughs> that's, I never that's interesting. That's good. I don't know that's why good. I thought about. I haven't thought about that before. I watch your stuff all the time. Like, I never even thought. Like, what happens if I just? Oh, ask thank him? you. What happens? Yeah, so, and then here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Things happen. I'm, I'm glad we can make this work out. We all have busy lives. so Yeah, uh, I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So we're just going to get right into our first topic. We have three, I'm going to say 3.5 topics, because that fourth topic could turn into a whole bunch of stuff. Interesting things. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, the first topic for this week, we're going to be talking about uh, Nintendo of America's policy change uh, that they did this past week with review copies of games in terms of games media. A little background on that. It was, uh, I believe, uh, what is it? Mario Luigi Superstar Saga, Banner Saga, whatever it was. The remake of the old game that released on 3DS got leaked weeks ahead of time. Uh, the full game, people were playing it. There was full playthroughs up on YouTube like two weeks before the game came out. Uh, and Nintendo was able to find out that the leak itself came from a member of the media, specifically a video influencer. So when people say that, they're talking about YouTubers. Um, so someone, I'm, I'm assuming part of their brand ambassador program leaked the game. Uh, and in response to that, Nintendo decided that, Hey, you know what? We're just not going to give review copies out, uh, to several outlets. At, at first it was just like video influencers. They were going to cut out uh, them and then they kind of extended it to almost all of games media. Now, some games media still get review copies and some don't. What makes it interesting is that. Uh, GameSpot got a review copy of Fire Emblem Warriors, but IGN did not. Really Ooh. weird. Uh, and it, in terms of YouTubers, maybe one of the, the may, arguably the biggest Nintendo YouTube channel out there, Game Explain, they did not actually get a review copy of the game either. Their copy came from a friend they have in the media in the UK, so it is a UK copy of the game. So the, they were still able to do coverage, uh, albeit they couldn't do coverage till this week because, again, they didn't get their own review copy. Uh, so that's just a little background on that. Now, some outlets, uh, Game Over Jesse actually just told me today that he is going to get a review copy of the game, but he's getting it on day of release. And this kind of goes into something that was reported that Nintendo, in their policy, has changed it to a tiered system. And it's really interesting when they say in their policy they change it to a tiered system because I've been getting review copies from Nintendo back in the day when I worked at Zelda Informer, and they were using a tiered system then, so I don't actually think that's new. Uh, maybe it's new for YouTubers. Well, what, what is the tiered system? So how the tiered system works is essentially they have three batches that they send games out in. So you want to be in tier one because tier one's like you get the game two, three weeks ahead of time. 
Um, and then there's tier two, they get it about a week out. And then tier three is day of release or after. Um, and then if you're any tier after that, you're just not getting the game. Because <laughs> right. usually it's like whoever leftover copies we have. If we have one left over, we'll give it to you. Um, and all of well, this is handled by Golan Harris, which is their their PR company. Um, well, you know what they say: everything old is new again. So that, that definitely could be. You know, people haven't heard about the tiered system. Yeah, that's in a what while, I think it so is. All of a sudden, it's new again. Well, the, the tier system, like when I, did, you know, I, I've actually been in different tiers over the years at Zelda Informer. We. Uh, I guess we never really talked about it publicly because it's not really something you talk about publicly. Like, you know, you don't want to be one of those, I guess one of those assholes out there that's like, Hey, uh, so I only got my review copy the day before the game came out. Like, like we're going to complain about getting a free copy of the game or something. Yeah. Um, so it's not like it's something you really talk about, but when it gets this extreme to the point that IGN can't even get a copy of the game, uh, even though they're not the source of the leak is, uh, this is intense. Like this, Nintendo of America, and this is only Nintendo of America, by the way. If you're a Nintendo of Europe or UK, Australia, Japan, you are not under this policy. This is just Nintendo of America, which is obviously because of the source of the leak. And it should be noted that 3DS games have been leaking pretty much since the release of the 3DS. Uh, I, I know uh, some people should know about this one. The big game that leaked last year was Pokemon Sun and Moon. I think it was actually just Pokemon Moon specifically that leaked. Um, so I remember everyone's like, oh, you should go download this ROM. I'm like, no, because that means a media <laughs> yeah. member dumped it. And like, that's not good. No, that's going to hurt us. I was surprised something didn't happen back then. Cause that like Pokemon's a lot bigger than a, a remake of a game they released on DS or Game Boy Advance. Right. I think it was, um, right, right. So that kind of goes over, over the history. Um, I'm not going to cover exactly my history with NDAs yet. I just want to first get your guys' thoughts on, this whole fiasco. I mean, do you, have you guys ever gotten review copies before of anything, or what are your Personally, thoughts? Personally, I have. I have never gotten anything from Nintendo. Okay. I just signed for up for their uh, for their program. Uh, I think I sent them an email at the end of September. Still haven't heard back from them. So this doesn't look good for me. <laughs> but yeah, I what, didn't hear about this actually until I watched your video on it. That oh, told me everything about it. Awesome. So well, yeah. glad I could inform you. Yeah. <laughs> so this, I mean, this sucks, obviously, but uh, again, I haven't gotten anything from them. I can barely get anything from anybody. I'll, I'll get a, I'll randomly get like indie games and stuff. Uh, sure. The biggest thing I've ever gotten was last week. Uh, my MCN sent us um, Shadow of War, and oh, it was a nice. week after it. It was a week after it came out. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. The, so. uh, the polls, I mean, it's a free copy of a game. Yeah. Never yeah, really complain about free copies. <laughs> It's all great. Everything's great. But, I mean, I want some Nintendo stuff. Give me some freaking Nintendo stuff. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no, uh, we signed up for the Ambassador Program. Not back in September. We did it about a month ago. Uh, Now, to be clear, because I have a history of talking to, like, their PR company in the past, I actually um, directly contacted someone I knew at their PR company and said, hey, I want to become a brand ambassador. Like, you know, uh, you guys have a history with me. I've done all the stuff at Zelda Informer. I'm doing my own thing now. Now I'm on YouTube. I, I know YouTubers way smaller than me that are in your program. Um, not any insult to them, but like I have a bigger audience. You know, can, can we do something here? Because I have some things I want to do with games or free release content. Um, and the thing is, that's another thing I want to get into is just like everything you can do with pre, you know, with with the review yeah. copies. People just think of the reviews. Uh, and be like, oh well, you can't do a review. I'm like, there's a lot of stuff that you could do if you have a copy of the game that's beneficial to you and your audience. Um, yeah, I, I I currently don't review games. Period, because yeah. it it takes way too long, and also you you need to have the game way early, or else it's just not relevant anymore by the time you get a review out. Exactly, and that's why, like uh, when Game Over Jesse messaged me, all happy he's getting Fire Emblem Warriors. I'm like, I, I would be happy about getting it too, but um, the chance of me making pre release content's gone. Yeah, um, yeah, I was actually. Exactly. I was actually in the conversation when that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I actually spoke up about that because um, he seemed so excited about getting this copy the day of release. And I was like, well, that kind of defeats the purpose of a review, right? I mean, a yeah. review is supposed to drive sales to the product. Yeah. Right. Yeah. At that point, I don't think it's a, I, I, for YouTubers. I can see where there's still a point. You know, I'm a YouTuber. I, I can understand still getting a game like the day of release because there's things you could do that maybe you wouldn't do otherwise because maybe you went to bought the game. So if you weren't going to buy Fire Emblem Warriors and suddenly they gave it to you, now maybe you'll do a day one live stream. 
maybe you'll do like an impression video on it or a conversation about it then maybe you wouldn't have done otherwise because maybe you wouldn't have bought that game because i mean let's just be honest the switch has a ton of games coming out from like you know the release of fire emblem warriors all the way through the rest of this year um like every week has a major game in fact there's a period in uh november where there's like three huge games coming out in nine days um which i mean it just happens welcome to pack yeah time. it's just the holidays yeah. yeah but like nintendo's never had a holiday like that since like the snes because so. <laughs> it's all third-party games and like that just doesn't happen uh we're not yeah. used to that but yeah uh you know speaking as someone who, who's gotten review copies uh you know literally before the games came out uh just zelda games although i did get a copy of epic mickey the first one Ooh. Um, I don't know why the heck I got a copy of that at Zelda Informer. Um, they just I said, do you want Nintendo one? Nintendo was pushing that. Yeah, they just said, do you want one? And I said, yes. And I never did anything. I just played it because uh, <laughs> it's not topical. I can't cover it at Zelda Informer, and I didn't have another set right. then. But so when I've gotten Nintendo stuff in the past, uh, the Ambassadors program has its own thing, too. Like once you get in, like you have to sign like this agreement. Um, and then each individual game has its own NDA which is a non-disclosure agreement. Um, and it basically gives you a list of rules. Obviously, like the number one rule is don't leak a game. <laughs> right. I mean, it, that should just go without saying. But, Oops. Um, and it, there's other little rules. In the, like they'll say, they'll, they'll give you the date. Like your preview can go up at this time. Your review can go up at this time. Uh, in your preview, you can only talk up to this part of the game. Um, in your review, you can pretty much talk about anything you want, but like it'll say like you can't talk about like the final level or the final boss. Um, like you can re- you could talk about it, but you can't like it, they basically have a certain point where they don't want you to spoil certain things. Uh, so it's not like they're trying to hold you back. They're just being like, hey, when your review hits, since you're doing an early review now, if you decide to wait to do your review till day one, you can say whatever you want. Uh, but this is only if you want to release it before day one. Because there are some yeah. outlets that like they'll be able to reset ten days early if they want, but they'll wait till day one because then they don't have those restrictions. Um, You're reminding me about uh, I I got Mass Effect Andromeda through Shoddycast, mm-hmm. um, and they had a bunch of restrictions on on their NDA. Uh, they they said we couldn't, you know, we had to do up until we we uh, on like the thirteenth you can do up until the first world on the on the fifteenth yeah. you can do up until the second world. But then about a week before the game came out, all that stuff started to come out about all the bad animations. <laughs> uh-huh. So that, so they emailed everybody. They're like, all NDAs lifted. Put whatever you want up. They went into like like uh, disaster so, mode. Someone's going to have something positive to override. This yeah, thing. and that did help. <laughs> panic <laughs> mode. Whoops. <laughs> that happens. Did Nintendo usually doesn't panic like that in terms of like if, if something leaks and gets out. It is what it is. They, they make you well. They usually don't have a. They usually don't have a big PR problem. Yeah, like big that. PR issue. Um, like uh, other things, like I, I've experienced in NDAs, like you can live stream two hours of total content uh, before X day. Uh, you can you can't live stream again like past a certain point or like they'll say in your live stream if you could please cut out cut scenes please do it and it's a live stream. I, just thought, I always thought it was really weird that like. When I don't know when the cutscenes are coming, how yeah. am I, and it's a live stream. I mean, I can cut out the game feed, I guess, but yeah. I, I'm I'm playing the game. <laughs> like yeah, it's right. a really weird thing to, to like. I don't I don't know. It's called live. I think that was back when Nintendo. Nintendo's been a lot better. I've heard recently, but I think it was back when they didn't understand YouTube very well or live streams. Um, like Wait. no, you just need to say, hey, look, you can't go. Like for Mario Odyssey, like you can't go to this world. Right, you can only do New York yeah. City or something. Do do we know what the Mario Odyssey like NDA is? So no, far? we do not. We have no. People idea. just got theirs today, I think. Oh, yeah, some cool. people did. Yep. Um, not very many, but some. That first yeah. that first tier. Hopefully, I mean, I, I hate saying this because I don't really don't care about IGN that much, but hopefully, like the biggest gaming site in the world got Mario Odyssey. They didn't get yeah. Fire Emblem, so I, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, that's just those kind of restrictions. I always thought the weirdest restrictions were like you could show thirty seconds of footage, um, or like you could show six minutes of total footage in thirty second segments. It, I'm like, yeah. I, just just say six minutes of footage. Yeah, right, right. Because I I could I could technically like how you can get around this. Record thirty seconds, or you just record six minutes and then every thirty seconds just cut out a couple seconds, um, and yeah. just put it all back together again. It I didn't really understand. Uh, some of that stuff. And at Zelda Informer, we would use that for things like, oh, uh, 
we we do the things people hate like oh here here's a look at the the boss in the third dungeon like they're like oh i don't want to see that well well don't look yeah don't watch the video yeah then don't look <laughs> i always, hate, like, like, I always yeah. hate i always hate when there's video showing all the bosses i'm like you don't have to watch right some people aren't going to get the game and don't care some people don't care anyways like in mario spoiler bowser is the final boss wait what yeah <laughs> Damn it! I get a lot of I get a lot of crap because one of my thumbnails has Super Sonic in it from Sonic Mania. Like that hasn't been around for like over twenty years. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> That's not even. What, what are you spoiling? <laughs> exactly. C- c- congrats! You just discovered a version of Sonic that's been around for most of my life. Awesome. Yeah. Um. So NDAs are just really weird in that the Nintendo's at least I haven't seen other companies because like the Epic Mickey one there was hardly any restrictions. You could basically show everything but like the final stage and do whatever you want. And I'm like, that's awesome. Too bad I run a Zelda website. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> and I actually like the first Epic Mickey. The, the second one, not so much. But um, I wish Nintendo Prime was a thing back then. I would have been awesome. But so, so let's discuss like some of the things um, that we like if if we had, you know, obviously <laughs> Bob over there, you do have a YouTube channel. Let's say Eric had a YouTube channel and or even like we ran like big video game media site media sites. Um what are some some ideas that you would do with review copies besides just review the game? Because obviously, like that's the big thing is reviews are still going to happen. Some are going to get rushed, or there's going to be less of them. Um, but what are other ways that you think, just like people not getting review copies, how does that affect like pre-release coverage? I, I, I typically I don't review games, but typically what I do is I, I pick an angle, like why is it good or why is it bad, or if there's a certain mechanic that sticks out. Like, is Mario rolling down the hill? Uh, uh, does it break the game? I don't know. Something stupid like that. Sure. Um, I guess in, in the case of Mario Odyssey, you can do uh, how many different types of things can you turn into? Can you capture in the game? You know, yep. stuff like that. Or, or like an overview of a specific world. Uh, game Explained does a lot of that stuff, I think. Yep, they do. That That's why they they got themselves hooked up with Fire Emblem Warriors from the UK. Because it's like the first time they haven't gotten a game in a long time. Yeah, um, and that's their that's their shtick. That's an interesting angle on that too, because you know, showing off the longevity of the game is one of the things that I was going to say. Um, you know, really showing how you can get your money's worth. Um, being able to, you know, to kind of, what are some of the things that I can do with the game that maybe the developer didn't intend, but are still fun, you know, nonetheless, and kind of helping helping me get the most out of the, you know, how much I've paid for the game. Um, so I think also, you know, he had a, you know, a great point as to being able to, you know, get more value out of the game than maybe the developers even intended to put in there in the first place. Yeah. I mean, I think back to like Breath of the Wild, um, a lot of the pre-release coverage we saw back then. Now, some people argued it was too much, but uh, a lot of the too much was from Nintendo themselves. I'd argue, um, they themselves kind of went overboard. But what you saw from media, at least what I saw, because I was covering it back then at Zelda Informer still, it was uh, it was just a lot of like, look at this really cool thing you can do with the physics engine that you didn't know. Yep. About. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And that's the kind of like so how many people like when E3 happened back in 2016 got sold on the game the minute someone catapulted themselves up in the air. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like It's just wait, you can do that. Yeah. yeah. Why would you yeah. want to do that? And then you're like, oh wait, you could you could take out your bow up there and start sniping. Yeah. Like what? Um, this is where I feel like it hurts the most. I don't actually think it hurts so much in the review aspect. Although I understand for outlets that really really like I'm not an outlet that relies on reviews. We, we've reviewed one game ever at Nintendo Prime, um, so I'm not someone that relies on reviews, and I don't do a lot of pre-release coverage of games because I don't get them. Mm-hmm. But like when we went, to, I went to E3 a couple of years ago, and when I, whenever I do get a chance to go hands on with the game, I discovered that a lot of our viewers and a lot of I think gaming fans in general, they just want to see whoever they follow, whatever outlet it is, they want to see their perspective on their experience with a game that those people don't get to play yet. Uh, people are always looking for information, and the information doesn't always have to come in the form of a final verdict. It, it can come in the form of just showing off cool things you can do in the world. Or if First it is impressions, I mean, yeah, if it is broken, showing that. Yeah. Um, you know, just like when uh, a bunch of the <laughs> back, back when I remember Assassin's Creed Unity came out and all the PC bugs. Um, it's important to see that stuff before people spend sixty dollars on their game. Um, as much as you know, 
I'm sure Ubisoft wishes they didn't show that stuff. Fix your game. I actually have an interesting story about Unity that I that I had read. Um, some of the reviewers, when Unity came out and was having all those issues um, with like frame rates and stuff like that, um, I was reading that uh, someone who had a review copy actually figured out if you unplugged the network cable from the back of whatever console you were playing it on at the time, um, it wouldn't connect to their online service and start lagging your game out. And that was one of the things that um, I seen kind of on release of that game as well, that people were saying that actually works. It sucks that you have to do that, but it is a workaround. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. Um, I, I think it's just interesting in general. Uh, like I, I think about myself, right? Like I'm, I report on news and everything, so I'm always out there looking for news. And some of my favorite news to cover is pre-release game coverage from places like Game Explain. Or, you know, Nintendo Everything or IGN or GameSpot or wherever, Kotaku. Um, all these different outlets that, that get the games early because they teach you something about the game that, that's really relevant. Like, when we heard things like, oh, there's going to be all, almost uh, or almost as many uh, moons in Super Mario Odyssey as there are Korok seeds in Breath of the Wild. What does that tell you? I, there's just a crap load of moons. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's a really interesting fact when people might be worried about, hey, the levels look simple. Maybe there's not enough things to collect. Well, the, okay, there's like 900 things to collect. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is um, a game of collection. It, it, all this pre-release coverage does is it, if you are confident in how good your game is, it's going to help you sell your game, even mm-hmm. without a review. Um, right. Even like with, with the two-hour live stream. The two-hour live stream could be huge because you're going to get a ton of people turning in to see a game directly streamed uh, that they haven't seen or, or can't play themselves, and it's someone besides Nintendo playing it. Because when Nintendo plays it, you know, or, or any developer plays it, you figure, oh, it could be canned, it could be, you know, pre-scripted. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, are they actually playing it? Um, and in some cases, you could tell. I, I think with the Treehouse during E3, it's really shown that, yeah, they're playing it because some of them aren't very good at games. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. I mean, they're translators. They're not necessarily there to be good at games. Um right. Now, I'm not one of those people that think, oh, you got to get good or you can't talk about games. I got to get out of here. Get out of here with that stuff. Um, but like, outside, of, I will say it was a little hilarious. that that Cuphead guy. That was that was insane. That and the Doom. I think that was oh, like a year ago. The Doom. The like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, it's one they're thing. They're both like, Polygon, right? Uh, no, the, the Cuphead guy was Wall Street Journal, actually. It was the Takahashi oh. guy that's always reporting all the Nintendo financial stuff from their meetings. No wonder Wall Street Journal hates YouTubers. We just ripped him <laughs> apart after that. Oh, I better watch out now. They're gonna start coming after this video. <laughs> nah, we're small enough. They won't come after us. We're not. We're not PewDiePie over here. Yeah. No. Um. Oh man, but yeah, it's it's just really interesting. I think that's what that's what hurts me. Even as just a consumer, I like getting all this information. Um, and that's one way I actually wanted to expand my channel. When I applied for the ambassador program, I did it knowing that. Uh, I wanted to do game reviews um, or at least have like a conversation. Uh-huh. Um, we, we do a podcast here. It would be great. The podcast before a game comes out. Let's talk about it. Eric and I sat down, played the review copy at Nintendo prime, maybe find some other people. Like if, you know, Bob over there got approved for review copies, let's try to get him on the podcast and let's have a conversation about, you know, obviously we, we'd have to know, like we can't talk about this, this, right, this, right. but you know what, what we can talk about, let's talk about it. And uh, I feel like, that's one thing I found myself enjoying a lot is when I when I hear the kind of funnies of the world or the easy allies out there um, or all these gaming podcasts is when they give like those previews, the weekly game comes out. It's interesting because usually at least it feels like they're being honest. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Because they'll critique games as well. Like they'll say, oh, yeah, it's a great game. But there, there's like this thing I don't like about it. Like I'm waiting for someone to come out and say they don't like the motion controls in Super Mario Odyssey. It's going to happen. Someone's going to hate it. Yeah. So right. like, they're they're optional though. Yeah, you know? they are optional, but everyone's like, no, they're not. Like when I play the demo, I'm like, you had ten minutes it's, rushed at a demo. Let's it's a demo. Let, let let's be honest here. You didn't sit down and literally go through every possible setting. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. When, when, when I, I I played it for like ten minutes and I played it in portable mode. So yeah, the, the, the thing the Joy Cons were on there. Yeah, they, I was gonna say they're not gonna make it where you have to take the Joy Cons off. Right. Yeah, and I um I remember when I first got um. 
when I first got uh, the uh, Skyward Sword, the motion controls for that I hated at first. <laughs> um, until I actually got in and really got decent with, you know, the hand motions. And one of the things that really upset me was trying to be able to do the spin move. You know, we have to like swing both, oh. you know, both of the motes that like really irked me. And there were some places in the game where you had to do that. And I just, it, that was one of the things that really frustrated me about that. And, um, I mean, I'm a huge, huge Zelda fan. So, um, I persevered. You know, oh, but yeah. um, if 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 it was any other game, I think I would have put it down for at least a couple hours. Totally. It's. I guess what I'm frustrated with is that in this policy, obviously, it negatively impacts my very slim chance that I had anyways of getting in the program or Bob's chance or anyone who's not already in the program. Right. Um. It also, and for, for those who don't know what we're talking about, there's a, a Nintendo Ambassadors program. We talked a little bit about applying to it before and how I went through Golan Harris and how he applied back in September. It's basically a program where they give you games early. That, that's really all, all they do. Uh, they even note specifically when you apply. I don't know if they did to you, but they did to me. They're like, just so you know, this does not whitelist you. Um, yeah, for, for the for their uh, creators program, their partner program or whatever. Creators program, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's a big thing. Like, we have to deal with the creators program all the time. Um, not so much in that we use it, but how can we circumvent it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't post like let's plays or, or a lot of gameplay stuff. So yeah, and I do post a lot of gameplay stuff. But yeah. I found, thank you, MCN. They're the ones that taught me how to use Nintendo footage without getting busted. Well, I, oh, please tell me. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll let you know we're, after. We're, yeah, the, we're, the we're thing, now managed. Yeah. We're now managed partners. So, yeah. but yeah, I wonder how far we can take that. You well, know? the biggest the biggest thing is uh, you can't have the game audio playing. That that's going to get right. flagged every time. That that and most of our videos that's out the window anyway. Yeah, yeah. The, our live the, streams is what is what kills me. Yeah, but, live streams. Really they care. claim they claim every live stream. I don't care about live. You know, we yeah. don't get a lot of uh, post views. Uh, views on live streams, yeah. anyway. So. I leave it all unlisted, anyway. Yeah, so I'm, I don't worry. I don't care about my live streams getting claimed. But yeah, there's that, it's, and then there's one other thing that I'm not gonna. Some people out there, oh, tell me, I want to do it. I want to. I'm like, eh, I want to be careful because <laughs> I, I just applied for the ambassador. That's program. a good idea. I don't want to let yeah. Nintendo know all the tricks that we're using. Oh, I only right. really got got <laughs> nabbed once when uh, I, I it was it was a commercial. It, it, was, it was from the trailer of uh, Mario Maker 3DS. <laughs> Some reason that got flagged. Oh, I can I can tell you this. You and absolutely, it was just the video footage. It yeah, wasn't even. The, you absolutely cannot use trailers. Can't touch them. That's all I do. That's all yeah. I do is use trailers. Yeah, yeah. That's what sucks. You literally yeah. cannot touch trailers. Uh, well, what I try to do, um, and it's really nice. Uh, Game Explain is really nice about it. If you talk to them, they'll like let you use their footage. Um, mm. And it sucks because like when you're talking about trailers, because you talk about a lot of trailers, um, yeah. it really sucks not being able to show a Nintendo trailer without getting claimed. Oh, it sucks. It's a, that's my number one gripe. And I even told that in a complaint I sent to Goal and Harris, their PR company last year. I was like, Hey, you know, I don't care if you want to claim gameplay and everything, but like really your trailers. Yeah. The trailer. Come on, man. Like not even movies do that. <laughs> like, come, yeah. like, come on. The, if people are showing your trailer, it's helping you right. immensely. Right. Uh, that, that always bothered me. Cause that's the reason I can't show trailers. Cause I'm like, Oh, like, oh, I want to talk about this new trailer. Well, I could talk about what's in the trailer. I could show you screenshots well, can, from the trailer. You know, I can understand, you know, not making, not being able to make money off of it, but not being able to show it, period. Or Well, it's usually yeah. the money. They'll usually let you keep yeah. the video up. Yeah. Um, but what, what sucks about it is, like, say, like, Bob, like he, they'll show, you know, say they show, like, a 10-second clip. Mm -hmm. Their, like, hour-long live stream or video, gone ah, for, yes. for monetization. And that's always yeah. been the argument with them. It's not so much... And the argument is basically fair use, you mm -hmm. know, what's right. what's fair use and what's not fair use. Right. Um, and showing like a clip of a trailer with no audio. So you're not you're not using any copyrighted music or sound effects. Um, and you're just like literally discussing the trailer. If you put it on any other platform, but YouTube, you're fine. Literally, you can put it anywhere else. And Nintendo doesn't care. But only on YouTube. And the only reason they care on YouTube is because there's an automated system to claim it. So Nintendo doesn't have to do any work, basically. Yeah, I can actually. It's just a um, that does it. 
I can actually give you some insight as into why the whole audio thing it's uh, as someone who knows how to write artificial intelligence. Um, it's much easier to match audio than it is video, mm -hmm. especially on the processing side. I mean, think about how many, how many things that the bot actually has to go through mm -hmm. per day. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to match all of that video with open CV and trying to match pixels, you know, when some of these videos go up to, you know, 4K and, you know, 60 frames per second, that's a lot of video to try and match. Mm -hmm. So that's really the big thing on that is it's it's easier to to um, to match audio. Yeah. And that's one of the big things my MCN told me, even when I'm using like game footage i record like the audio the audio the audio there's nothing you can do about it even if it's just like link going hey yeah they're gonna you're done right um, yeah but that's fine because a lot of my videos are are, <laughs> are either me on camera talking or uh you know voiceover video or you know i'm on camera then i cut then i cut away to some gameplay but i'm still talking so it's not a big deal to me um it sucks right. like when i want to be like oh i want to talk about this game's music if you guys ever wonder why i don't get to talk about nintendo's music it's because I feel like if you're going to talk about the music, I should let you be able to listen to some of it. Mm -hmm. Right. And yeah. I can't. I can give you a fan remix version, but it's not the music I'm talking about. <laughs> so, you can, can you, you put can do like down three second clips. No. They, they claim no, they not like, even that? No. It's Damn. like instant. Yeah, it's bad. And it's just as bad with the trailer footage. I don't know how they pull it off with the trailer footage because uh, I remember last year when Angry Joe went on his huge rant about Nintendo claiming a, claiming a video. He was trying to cover something from the Nintendo Direct. It was like a reaction video or something. And he took yeah. he took the Nintendo Direct. He inversed it. He blurred it. He made it black oh, and white. Oh, I remember this. And he like shrunk it down. And like, he did all this stuff to it where basically if you just look at the video, there's no way – you can that that like a Nintendo person looked at it would even know at glance that it's Nintendo Direct footage. Like he, it was, um, ew, but it, it, no matter what he did to it, it kept getting claimed. Yeah, he even flipped it upside down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can I can tell you how that works too. Um, it's easier if you have a subset of something specific that you're looking for. Cause I mean, yeah. um, a trailer is a trailer is something very specific. It's something yes. it's a whole, it's a set of images basically that, you know, that turn into a video. And the way that that happens is, is they're only looking for that subset of, of images. Sure. Whereas a game is vast and huge and you could go anywhere. You could be doing anything at any one point in time. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to match that, but yeah. you can match a trailer real easily because it's, it's something very specific. Yeah. And the thing is, I don't have, now that I know some of the tricks to use like gameplay footage, my issue is no longer Nintendo. It's YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. YouTube. Like yesterday we did six videos, which is insane. I never do six videos ever. But um, I felt generous, I guess. <laughs> Actually, I just I just got I kind of got in a roll. Sometimes you get on a roll and you just get a bunch of content done. And some of it was news. So it wasn't like, oh, I could just wait to, to talk about this tomorrow. Um, no. <laughs> so <laughs> you get all the videos out and then everything's going good. I'm actually getting some good views on the stuff. Um, wake up today. All six videos are demonetized Damn. and I can That's go cool request. Problem. I'm like, really? Really, literally, every time they've done this to my channel and I request a manual review, they approve it. They have not demonetized one video and kept it demonetized. I thought that bot thing they used to do that is supposed to learn. Have, wouldn't they, they figure out on my channel by now that uh, it, it, it's been like six months and none of my videos Here's, violate? Wait, wait. Did, was it demonetized or was it marked not suitable for most? No, not suitable. So. Not suitable for most. Yeah, we got hit with that like two weeks ago or no like a month ago every one of our videos that we upload would would get hit with uh, that let but me you request um, it and then they take it down uh, let me uh let me give you some insight on that too yes when you're when you're working with data sets like like i said i know how to write artificial mm -hmm. intelligence i do it at work we yeah. match data um that comes in from car manufacturers that's kind of what i do at work is uh business software for car manufacturers um, and when you're, when you're doing that, you can't kind of train on the fly. You have to get real data in and then you have to run it in bulk. So essentially what they have to do is they have to get all this data in and then they have to run tests against it because basically the way artificial intelligence learning works is basically it will predict. Um, so you give it the input parameters 
and then you give it the result and then it tries to predict until it gets to the actual result. And then it gets smarter because it knows what path it took based on the input parameters, how to get to that result. And then essentially they have to run that several times in different layers with different, slightly different input parameters to find what input parameters work best to get that expected result. So essentially what they're doing is they're running big sets of this data through it. They may not even be to your channel yet in the learning process of the bot. The problem is that while the bot's learning, it's killing channels. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, and the problem. <laughs> yeah. I know. I completely understand that. I'm just giving you like, yeah, no. you know. I think I think one way – I don't know if YouTube can the, – the problem is is that when they say, you know, not suitable for ads, they're not running ads at all. Um, it would be interesting if I, – I, they're not going to do it because it's going to cost them too much money. But if like – say you dispute a claim, right, and you win, mm -hmm. and that video's got, you know, 10,000, 12,000 views or whatever that never got monetized or only got YouTube red money. Um it would, be, it would be nice if YouTube would just be like, or Google in this case, well, hey, look, sorry, we, we didn't mean to flag it. We're going to give you a standard rate on those views of like $2 per, per yeah. thousand views or whatever. And that would offset, that would actually make people not be as upset. as like, okay, we'll give you time to learn because we're, we're still going to get a kickback. Maybe we're not getting the $5 or $8 CPM that we might get at times, especially if you're right. part of an MCN that helps you get higher CPMs. But it, it's still, they're at least getting something back and not just losing basically a majority of your revenue. Mm -hmm. uh, on yeah, that, 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 that money's got to come from somewhere, though. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Well, what sucks is because they don't actually run any ads at all. Yeah, um, that's what kind of sucks about well, it. Is I'm kind of surprised that you know they don't run the ads and then kind of you know use some of that money as back pay type. Well, of thing. It, it's tough because the whole reason they started this is because ad yeah. companies were going to pull out uh, of YouTube, yeah. and the, yeah, there were like the exactly, six major yeah. ad companies were, were going to pull out, um, and YouTube's like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. wait. So this was like a knee-jerk reaction, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what sucks about this AI. And even as you were explaining it, I'm like, that's all fine. I think if they would have planned to create this AI over the last couple of years instead of having to rush it out the door, um, it, it might be better as well. And, and I know, like, I don't think the data sets are, personally, I don't think their data sets are ever going to learn by individual channels because um, there's too many channels yeah they may it may not even be programmed to do that i mean it's going to do it based on like trigger words in the title trigger yeah. words in the tags trigger words in the description because that's what i've heard like a lot of people a lot of times it's the the words it and, is yes and it you know because they're trying not they don't want ads on anything that's uh not, i'm not gonna say they don't want ads on drama but they don't want ads on like political drama um they don't want ads on uh, any sort of tragedy yeah. thing they don't want ads on anything that Sounds like you're family friendly. You got to be yeah, family. Yeah, you got to be pretty close to family friendly. The, you don't have to be entirely, but you got to be pretty close. You, you know, like there are people that swear and get ads, but yeah, I right. think the people that swear and get ads are getting it through their MCN. Uh, yeah. Who like, because like I'm part of BBTV, like they straight up told me it was like, hey, look, you know, like we sell ads too. So like just even oh, yeah. if YouTube's not oh, monetizing yeah. your stuff. We but might like, be monetizing your stuff. So yeah, but but they do it through YouTube. Yeah, they like do when do they're it selling YouTube. an ad, they do it through YouTube. And a lot of times, yeah. I, I hate MCNs. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely hate them. But because they'll say that they'll say that they're selling ads for you, yep. and they're not. They, they'll say maybe we're, we'll yeah, we'll sell maybe, some ads. Maybe they they, yeah. they leave it like really open ended because they don't do it for you. They do it for the PewDiePie's and and, and yeah, the yeah. Casey Nice sets. Yeah, you know, or they or they try to sell them in bulk. Yeah. So it's I I. I got a lot of opinions at all. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I understand. Like, for me, the only thing that's nice is since I joined the MCN, my CPM, like my average CPM, has gone up. That happened to me. The but only reason I'm not making more money is because more of my videos get clean. <laughs> right. That happened to me, oh. but I don't know if it's necessarily the the mcn yeah it's, i know right? it's probably more likely that it's just right. the time of the year where the cpm goes it could, it could it could be yeah, it, there's so many factors but, but my mcn made me a managed partner that's like the best yeah thing that's thing nice could happen. that that is nice <laughs> so. um it there's just a lot of things that go into what what's happening with with nintendo america's policies and the ability of youtubers to make money and a lot of you author you know i've even seen replies to this you know on that video i made where people are like well who, who cares be like everyone else and just buy your games i do mm -hmm. 
We, we've yeah, never, been, we've I never mean, no. ever gotten a review copy at Nintendo Prime. Yeah. So like, I've been on this YouTube for four years. I've been buying games. I'm like, I'm not. I've been buying games for thirty years of my life. I. I yeah. It's not like this is new to me. Okay, I've spent probably more money on video games than than I care to admit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I I'm looking at the um, you know, the itinerary here, and and I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of bring this up a little bit. I mean. A lot of games generally release in bulks, at, you know, during certain times of the year. Yeah. Um, and it, 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 that's a lot of money to drop all at once. It is. Yep. You know, and it it, you you, you, you <laughs> can't expect to cover everything unless you're, you know, doing some side business that's making you, you know, massive amounts of money or yeah. your day job is making massive amounts of money. I mean, I make pretty good money and. I mean, there's a lot of things on this list that, you know, I plan on picking up, but I'm not going to be able to pick up at launch. Yeah, it, it, it's it's less about the money for me and more about the time. Like, I'm not going to have too. the time to play yeah. And, yeah. And, and talk about every single yeah, one of these see, things that's coming up. Yeah, that, that that's why I actually want review copies, because it affords me time. Yeah. Um, when you get copies like two, three weeks ahead of time, and like, like I said, we got three games for Nintendo Switch coming out that are AAA games in a, a three-day span next month. And granted, Nintendo doesn't handle the distribution of that, so I could technically contact those people and try to get a copy. Um, I don't know how recipient of that. Maybe they will be because they want to sell it on Switch. I don't know. But even then, you, you get weeks with it instead of three games, nine days. Cover yep. it all. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if I had three games but had three weeks... It's different. I could spend a week with each game, uh, get acclimated, make sure the conversations are worthwhile. Because what, what I, I think what a lot of fans when when they when they say things like that, you know, like you know, buy the games yourself or you know, get a real yeah. job or, or this or that. It, it's one of those things we, where some people just have this illusion that everything in life is free, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and that it's, our time is free. And, and I, I yeah. hate that attitude. Like like uh, we have a stretch goal for on our Patreon to do game reviews. And uh, so people are like, oh, I don't, I don't agree with having uh, reviews held behind that. You should just do it for free, do it for that. I'm like, the one review we did, the reason I didn't continue to do reviews after it is it took me 150 hours to make that review. Yeah. It's like... that's a, People only see the end product. They don't yeah. see all the work that went into it. Yeah, they're like, well, like, I, yeah, well I spent 150 hours... hours uh, I spent 150 hours playing the game. I'm like, that's great. I, I might have spent 150 hours playing that game too over the course of the next year. Yeah. Yeah, you know, <laughs> there's that you crush it into like a week, but also you know all of the time you spend actually making the freaking video. Yeah, like yeah. The, don't don't include all the mm-hmm. editing, especially since you have to do editing sometimes to get around. You know, Nintendo. Uh, they don't include the script mm-hmm. writing, the the various takes you had to do. Uh, you know, maybe some proof editing. You may have had another editor look at it to make sure there were no mistakes. It, a, a lot a lot of people see this like YouTubing and they say, "Oh my god, it's so easy! I don't understand why you people want so much money." If it's so easy, then go do it. Then mm-hmm. start it yourself. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I tell them. Soon they, learn. Yeah, they will. Because I've had a lot of people come up to me, uh, and they're like, man, I, I make content I think is better than yours. Why do you get viewers and I don't? I'm like, well, I mean, everyone thinks their content is great. Or yeah. at least a lot yeah. of people do. Um, and I'm like, I, I can't tell you specifically why you don't get viewers, because I'd have to go through this whole analysis right. of what you're doing. And I, I'm, I, I'm like, I, I don't have time for that. I, I barely can keep up yeah. with my own stuff. Um, a lot of people also don't want to change what they're doing no, to, yeah. to, to meet like the the a, a wider audience or something. Yeah, if, if you tell the them, people aren't watching this because uh, you're covering an old game or something. They'll mm-hmm. go, "Oh, but I want that's my thing." Okay, yeah. well your thing's not going to work. I'm sorry. Right? Yeah. Can I can I kind of give you the perspective of outside looking in as someone sure. who absolutely has done YouTube videos but like not really attempted to go too big? Yep. Um. From the outside looking in, it's exactly as he says. Um, it's they see the end product, and a lot of people look at that and go, "Well, I can make a video," and then they make a video and they put it out on YouTube, and then they're wondering why it's not getting any hits. 
and that's all they've done. They haven't advertised it on Facebook or they haven't advertised it on Google Plus or through Twitter. You know, they're not going out there and trying to bring people in from external sources. Yeah. They're just expecting that they put it out there with the title of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild and they expect that people are going to find it and watch it and enjoy it. And I mean, maybe their content is legitimately good. Mm -hmm. Without mm -hmm. the extra work, you're not going to get the views. Yeah, and there's the things to consider, like keywords and tags in your description. Uh, you know, there's the social media outreach. There's a. This is the nice thing about YouTube, and, and this is why I actually, while I was surprised that Bob over there was willing to get on the podcast, it was only a surprise because we had never talked before. Um, that that's because you know, but but this is the nice thing about YouTube is we're all willing to like work together. Yeah, but, like, absolutely. Like, oh, and, that, and it helps. It helps everybody. And, and that's a way. Uh, and that's the thing. Like some people don't think like the time you spend uh, getting that extra exposure, going on other people's channels to do things. Like Bob, he's over here. He's going to get some extra exposure to our fans. And you know that that takes time out of his. Hopefully, day. It drives some people over there too. Yeah, know? I mean, and, and, and likewise, ways. likewise, yeah. We put it up social media. You know, you retweet, you do this and that. Um, but 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 it's it it goes beyond that. Like a lot of my friends, they they have since you know. They're always like, oh, it's stupid every week. You like take a day off and, and you just sit in your corner and make your stupid videos because I used to do it to nobody. <laughs> yeah, right. But then then once it started to gain traction, they're like, how do I do that? I want to do that. And then they yeah. start yeah. videos. And then they're like, why is nobody watching my videos? And I was like, the same reason nobody watched my videos three years ago. Yeah, you, you, know? gotta, you, you learn. There's a lot of things to learn, yeah. you know. Or, or people or a lot of people will say, how do I get big on YouTube? Or, or how do I get to where you are? Not big, but how do yeah. I get to where you are? And I'll say, I don't know, make 700 videos. Start now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it you know? go. Yeah, I mean, it like really my, my channel, my channel's been around for eight years. There's over a thousand Damn. videos on it. Oh, over a thousand videos on it now. Damn, that's see, that's what you got to do. Well, Start eight years ago <laughs> and put a thousand videos. Yeah, on. no. Well, it was weird because this channel uh, itself used to be the Zelda Informer YouTube channel, but the thing is, oh. it's basically been my YouTube channel because I was the one running Zelda Informer for eight years. Mm -hmm. So, like, mm. I was the only one putting content out on this channel. The only reason. I don't even know how we got to a thousand videos. I mean, when you think about it, that sounds like a lot, but then over eight years, it's really not yeah. too bad. Um, right. But Zelda Inform was always inconsistent because my focus was always, let's grow the website. I was a traditional media guy. Let's grow the website. Let's grow the website. We basically had a YouTube channel just because we needed, we wanted to make sure we locked up the username. Um, right. And so yep. we'd release a few videos, like we'd, we'd have some gameplay clips or a walkthrough or something. Um, but we were never consistent with anything. Uh, as I found out this year, after uh, some negotiations with the current owner of Zelda Informer to get a hold of this channel, um, because I, I was really like, dude, like this is my channel. I built this over eight years. Um, I know that most of the audience is probably not no longer paying attention <laughs> at the time. <laughs> um, but when I took it over and then became Nintendo Prime, we've gained like 10,000 subs over the past, you know, four months. Um which I, I'm very happy with. I, I that is not, awesome. I did not expect that. And, and I've, I've learned a lot. And, and the thing to learn about this stuff when people are trying to start out and why, like, even now, why I'm frustrated, like, with these policies um, is that I found something that's working that is resonating with people. Mm -hmm. And some of it is, like, yourself. When people think making YouTube videos is easy, one, you have to have a personality mm -hmm. that people like. Um, whether that is true. you, you got to be yourself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the thing is, you want to find. Watch you to hate yeah, you. yeah. If people can watch and hate, some people like to watch the hate. That happens. Probably won't gain a lot of subs, but you'll gain a lot of views just so people can yell at you. Right. Um, or maybe both. I don't know. <laughs> it seems to be what happens with PewDiePie's videos all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, he's in a different stratosphere. Fifty-seven million or whatever. Yeah, whatever yeah nobody can touch him. No, he's untouchable. It, it feels weird saying that. I mean, the only people that can touch him is YouTube and. They don't seem to be too keen on shutting them down. So, yeah. Um, well, they kind of did. I mean, they they did. They definitely knocked him down a few pegs. I mean, they took they took away his YouTube Red show. Um, yeah. I don't think that's knocking him down because they gave him the money for it. Yeah. He, yeah. The, he's still not going to give him any more exposure because it's only going on his own YouTube channel. Yeah. The, that thing. The only the only thing that sucked for him out of that deal is that there just wasn't going to be a season three. Uh, for him personally, right. he still got all the money because he didn't. What people don't know about those YouTube Red shows is that the people that are on it get paid ahead of time. They're not paid for how many views it gets. Right. So YouTube takes right. all that money from the views. Uh, so PewDiePie got all his money for that season. Like apparently it was in the contract. No matter what happens, like he, he gets the money. 
Uh, and he'll, yeah, well, he constantly I mean, beats you over the head with it. Like, yeah, they canceled it, but I got paid anyways. <laughs> well, I mean, it just it sucks that, you know, f- for him. I mean, personally, I didn't watch the show. I am a YouTube Red yeah. subscriber. I do have YouTube Red, yeah. and I enjoy YouTube Red. And, and, I, I watched an episode of the first season, and it was not very good. No, that, I yeah. like PewDiePie. I like him, but that was not a good show. Well, I'm not a big no. PewDiePie fan, personally. Um, yeah. I, you know, I subscribe for things like um, Matt Pass Game Lab and sure. that sort of thing. Um, and I really hope, uh, going out to YouTube here, that they are giving the YouTube red money like they say they are. Um, because, you know, that's a large part of the reason why I did get YouTube Red is to make sure that, you know, with the apocalypse and stuff, people are, are getting paid for my views. And I mean, yeah. it helps not. It definitely helps. Yep. YouTube, yeah, YouTube Red, red views re- count way yeah. more. YouTube Red views do not, uh, no, no matter what they do to your video, you basically always get YouTube Red. Which is which is good. I yeah. mean, because I mean, you guys deserve it. Um, and and for those of you out there who are thinking about getting Google Red or uh, YouTube Red, get YouTube Red. It's it's actually really good. And a lot cheap. of the shows on there. Yeah, it is cheap. Um, if, if you're a YouTube Power user, it's definitely worth it. You got the. You oh can, yeah. You, uh, on mobile, you can download videos. And you, you can, can you know you in the back of your head. Screen off. Yeah. And and uh, I mean, there's always the ad free, which is the yes. best part. And you're but supporting you every creator that you will enjoy. The, that and you get Google Play Music for free. Yes. So, so get rid of you know the the Spotify. one thing I really dislike about the the Google um the because I pay for Spotify the family plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one thing I dislike about the Google thing um the Google Music is you you can only listen on one device at a time. Yeah. And oh. it, that even goes to YouTube videos because I was sitting here listening to some Trivium, which is my favorite band, um and my dad who um is using my laptop you know and he um was listening to something else and you know and it cut me off and i was like <laughs> yeah can I, can I just watch this non-youtube red man i just i just want to listen yeah to i i hate that that is one thing that i need to improve with youtube red uh it actually annoyed me about netflix back in the day when like you could only have two simultaneous viewers i'm like but, i think youtube tv there uh they, yeah. they have like family plans and stuff yeah maybe um but yeah you know just people like if you go out and get started on YouTube, it's hard. It, oh, yeah. There's no easy path. There's no right answer. You got to be comfortable talking to nobody for a long time. You do. <laughs> you got to be comfortable talking to nobody. And you can't be afraid to do things like contact other YouTubers. Uh, I'll give you an, an example here because, like, I, I, my channel is like half the size of Wolf Den's over there. Um, but I can give you an even better example of like contacting other YouTubers and, and working with them and helping them out. Uh, the Nintendo Guru. He was on our podcast last week. Mm-hmm. He's only got a thousand followers. Um, he's creating live content. He's a live content creator every day. Um, obviously, he's doing this in his spare time. You know, he's not making a living off a thousand followers. Um, but he uh, literally, I was just suggested, hey, why don't you talk to this guy and, and see uh, if he's a good fit for your podcast? So I went and I looked at some of his content. And I'm like, this guy's got really good content. I got no problem putting him on the podcast. I it's, think he's it's not really about the numbers sometimes. Sometimes yeah, it's, it's just, just something interesting to say. Stuff. I said, I'm, I'm like, yeah, is there, you know, when, when people, the thing is, when you do this, you could think about the promotion aspect. See, the thing is, um, I reached out to the Nintendo Guru and asked him, which, you know, a lot of times larger channels might not be looking at the smaller ones. But when you're a small channel, it, don't be afraid to even, like, say you have 10 followers and you're looking at a channel with 5,000. Don't be afraid to, like, contact him. Like, hey, can, can we do something together? I'll be um, honest. I don't. I never talked to anybody. Well, the, the, well that's the thing. Oh, I kind that's of, not I kind good. Of, that's not good at all. But no. I, I, I never talked to anybody. I, and but that's okay. But see, I contacted. That's something you. I need to fix. Yeah. Well, I contacted yeah. you, and you were cool with it. It's like sometimes absolutely you, you just can't be afraid to to get your well, name out there. And well, just the worst that happens people. is they say no, and then you're right back yeah. in the same spot. Yeah, it's not like yeah, gonna, exactly. Yeah. I mean, basically, as long as you are creating what content that you're proud of. I wouldn't, I'd say don't be afraid to contact anyone. The, the only thing I will say um, is if you're someone who is, say, I'm trying to think about this. Say the only microphone you have is really crappy and it's always cracking all the time. Yeah, you got you got to make good content. Yeah, first. you got to make good content. That's the thing. Like, if you think Wait, that's good it. contact and it's stuff that hurts people's ears, I can tell you, like, if the Nintendo Guru, he could have the best content in the world, but if his audio was really, really bad, I wouldn't have asked him on the podcast. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hurt, yeah, I don't I hurt you guys' ears. Um, yeah, 
there's some people that I really, really enjoy the content that they make, but I can't stand <laughs> something about what they're doing. It like irks me. Yeah. And I, I'm one of those people that um, if I see something that is, you know, that it, it, there, there's a lot of things that just really get on my nerves. Sure. You know what I mean? And I and it will turn me off instantly. Of, of anything, yeah. even if I do, you know, think that the, the content itself is quality. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you this. If you're on YouTube, you have to have quality audio. And know it, you do not need hundreds, audio is the number one. hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of equipment. You do not need. <laughs> I'll give you no. give you an what example. If, you, mics if you're right watching here. this video, we're, we're using $30 mics right here. Yeah. $30 mics. They this are one was um, not as good. This as, one here. Yeah. This one here uh, is a hundred. It's the it's the Turtle Beach one, the stand the stand up one yep. that works with like the PS4 and the Xbox and, and that sort of thing. Okay. This was an awesome investment. It's an awesome microphone, hundred bucks. Yep. Yeah, same thing with the Blue Yeti. That's the one I'm yep. using right yeah, now. Yeah, Blue Yeti is, is actually my uh, when I'm not doing that's podcasts. like the industry standard for for entry level. Yeah, the Blue Yeti. yeah, my Blue Yeti is it's my, the same is, thing as the Turtle Beach. They're like the same. Yep. Yeah, and, and if even the Blue Yeti, like if that's too expensive for you guys. There's also the blue snowball. That one yes, works that just a, fine for people getting. That's surprisingly started. good. Yeah, yeah. it's surprisingly actually, good. It's about half the price of the Yeti, and I use yep. I use the blue Yeti for most of my recordings outside of our podcast because we, we have a two person in person setup. Now these mics work good now. Uh, they were trouble before we got the mixer. Right. So I admittedly had to invest in a mixer because these are uh, oh what kind of mics are these again? Uh, condenser mics. Um. And with condenser mics, you need you need like good amps for them. You need uh, power. And, yeah. And, yeah, like we had we had a, a, a separate amp we were using for it. After switching to the mixer that has an amp built in, this amp is definitely way the hell better than the amp oh, we yeah. were using. Um, and it's made a I huge actually, difference with these mics. Sorry, I don't mean to keep cutting you off. No, it's um, cool. I usually cut people off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's actually but, kind of a nice um, change. <laughs> <laughs> um i actually was in a in a live band for a while i didn't make it very far i mean it was for fun anyway but uh, we had some we had some live gear um and we had an sm58 that uh that i had because i was the singer at the time and um that thing gave me so much trouble until i found out that you need to power it it has like this yes. internal stuff in the actual microphone that does compression noise gating all yep. this kind of stuff and it needs power you have to have an external device that can actually push power into it yep yeah so phantom power. yeah phantom power yeah if you got, if you're a small youtuber out there all I can say, the biggest thing is just making sure you do invest in some sort of microphone setup. Do your research beforehand or just grab one of those USB Blue Snowballs, Blue Yetis um, and a pop filter for them. And yep. you're pretty much going to be set for what you're going to need. I mean, you can download Audacity, free audio program if you're looking for something or, like that. Or if you have a camera, the Rode, uh, the Rode Video Mic yep. Pro is, yes. is good. Or th th there's a Video Mic... Uh, What's it called? There's a there's a video mic that that's a lav mic that plugs into your phone. Yes, and it's mm -hmm. surprisingly really. Yeah, good. I can't remember which one that was. I think I know which one you're talking about because I was actually looking at it for uh, when I'm on the go. It um, is it is a phenomenal lav mic. Yeah, huh. um, and I recommend it. Up. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing: like uh, even this video, like you're watching this video version of the podcast, Eric and I here, like this is just our cell phone recording the footage. Yeah. Uh, so, there's nothing wrong with that as long as the lighting is good no as long as the lighting is yeah, good yeah the lighting is good like yeah. we this thing no. I, they got the green screen got lights like obviously I, there's some investment in the setup i have now but i didn't get all this right away right like when i, I mean started, honestly when it I, takes money to make money yeah yeah well here's the thing when i was first making content on our channel we had our podcast i think it was originally audio only before we tried to add the video aspect in um, we did that after E3, I think, once, because we did a live stream for E3, remember, mm -hmm. two years ago? Yep. Um, or last year? Yeah, no, it's about a year and a half ago now. Uh, and that's when we said, hey, look, people really like the video thing. Let's see if we <laughs> yeah. can do more with that. And I'll just use my... Because that time we used the webcam, the C920. And I'm like, let's see if we can do better quality with the phone. And it turns out, oh, yeah, the phone quality is way better. It just... You got to get past the uh, whole 30-minute 30, 30 video. Well, that's only on this. That wasn't a yeah. problem at the iPhone doesn't yeah. have that issue. Yeah. But I don't yeah. have an iPhone anymore. So right. that's a Samsung thing. Um. Anyways, so I you use, you, use what you have. No, I'm just saying use what you have. 
Um, and don't be afraid to invest, but invest smartly. Like I have, you know, what, four different studio lights now. Um, I actually need to get a new stand for my phone because the phone stand I have, the actual thing that holds it is cracked. And oh, now I can't nice. always get it to stand. Like, even now you look at it, it's technically slightly crooked because it's cracked and oh. I can't fix it. No, way to go. Now people are, now people with OCD uh, are going to be... Like, it's okay. No, in, in editing, he actually slightly moves it. Oh, okay. He slightly adjusts okay. it. So you guys can't tell, but I know. And it makes it hard in editing. It sucks. Uh, it's not that hard, but it, it, it still makes it harder. Um, right. But that's the thing. Like, I know my next big investment, I'm getting a camera. Mm-hmm. I like an actual camera. You know, I don't know if I'm going to go DSLR or what I'm going to do yet. But um, because, you know, the last investment was the mixer to improve the audio. Mm-hmm. Because as I tell people, when you're on YouTube, audio is audio is number one. Mm-hmm. Make sure that yep. audio is crisp. Because when I started doing uh, daily videos, uh, when we switched the channel to Nintendo Prime, I, I was literally audio over still images. The like most basic thing you can do. Mm-hmm. Audio, yeah. here's some still some rotating screenshots and still images or whatever I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean the big thing now is audio over gameplay. Yeah. And just just completely irrelevant gameplay. Yeah. Oh, and, absolutely. and again, that that ta- that takes, you know, uh some some setup. Like if you want to do relevant gameplay, like I try to do relevant gameplay it's hard as a Nintendo YouTuber, but if you're trying to use relevant gameplay, you know, you don't have to own the console. You're going to have to buy the games. You're going to have to buy a capture card a computer that can handle all that. Uh, the, uh, the irrelevant gameplay is because people don't want to invest like that. Um, they'll just use whatever game they own on steam, record it and throw yeah. their audio over it, uh, which is fine. Whatever you have, make use of what you have before you invest. It's like me. Uh, exactly. you always want to, as long as you have an okay microphone to start out with, Go from that, like I was doing that in still images to a month later, I made enough money to, to be like, okay, now let's bump it up to capture card. And because I already own the system, of course, I'm a fan, right? I'm a fan right. of Nintendo, so let's right. get a capture card and let's start capturing footage of the games I have and using that, start doing voiceover or gameplay that way. And then let's, well, you know, I why are we just doing video for podcasts? Why can't I? It's, a, it's a slow progression, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you also got to know, you also got to know why you need something. You also, so like, yeah, you, can have, you can have a YouTube starter kit, but like. Why are you using these lights instead of just using your house lights? Why yes. are you getting a mic? Right. You know? Well, it's just like earlier. You know, you guys don't ever see this, but before we start every podcast, I have to spend like 10 minutes fiddling around with the mixer because I'm mixing all of our audio together. And I'm a noob at this stuff, right? But I did all my research into the mixer before I bought it to know that it would do what I needed to do. It's just me yeah. learning it because they don't come with instruction booklets. <laughs> Um, right. I've, I've watched uh, several videos on like what all the different knobs do and everything. Um, but for our purposes, I don't really have to touch many of the knobs. It's mostly just volume adjustment. Uh-huh. Um, I don't add any extra bass to people's voices or anything. Not yet. Make sure we don't have Not any yet. echoes. Not yet. <laughs> and then, I mean, the next up upgrade for that is getting some sound effects in there. but but that's not that's again that's an upgrade to me that's not as essential as getting an actual camera Mm -hmm. um and like progress don't just jump into things uh one issue when i ran gamnesia.com uh there was another guy who ran it with me named colin and he believed when he created youtube content it wasn't worth doing if you couldn't make like the absolute possible best thing ever Mm -hmm. and there is a point to quality over quantity that is that is a real thing uh, but sometimes when you push that quality to a point that's not sustainable, mm-hmm. it's not worth doing. You, yeah, like, you can't you, make a feature film every week. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like right. He ended up doing like this weekly news recap show that was really awesome, high production value, lots of editing. But it was just for his schedule, it was completely unfeasible to do that. Like, so don't do that. You, yeah. you can cut it back. You can lower the production value. You need to find that happy medium that you're able to do and then only increase things as you can justify increasing them. Maybe you got a pay raise at work. Maybe you yeah. are making money off YouTube now and you can right. reinvest that money. And and that's the thing too is, is you start out small and then people you, – your channel just grows with you and hope I – mean, at least that's the hope anyways. Yeah. And you know people will eventually see your stuff getting better and hopefully then start spreading the word that, hey, this guy is actually starting to get good. You know, his content's good. It may not be the best quality, but it's it has been, you know, getting better over time. So I'm expecting it to eventually get to, you know, here versus where right. it is now. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I mean, a, like I've a, always have a whiteboard in my office that's like, here's where I'm heading. Here's what's coming oh, yeah. up next. Here's where I want to start improving things. Like, I'm already thinking, I've been thinking for the last month or so, okay, I got to think about a camera. And I've been doing a little bit of research into cameras because when you look for research, every YouTuber will tell you a different camera they use. Um, 
so like doing the research into that, doing the research into the audio equipment I had to do. Uh, the thing is, it, it feels weird say, telling you all this because I technically had a head start. A lot of you guys did. I was working at Zelda Informer, and I took my final checks yeah. I got working there and invested into Nintendo Prime. Now, everyone always has that, like, oh, I have a couple thousand dollars. Let me invest mm-hmm. it. Um, I could right. do that. Like, the, my primary investment was the computer I'm using um, to edit with, which uh, when I was editing, I mean, I still have that laptop down there, the busted one. Uh, <laughs> editing on that thing was a pain, and it like a 10-minute video with ga- just gameplay would take, like, three hours to render at 720p. Um but it is what it is. Yep. I, I realized that I didn't want to waste that time. I needed something better. So I invested in a computer when I could have got a camera. I could have got the audio equipment. But what's it matter if I can't get the content out in time? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. That, that's the way I looked at it. So like when you're looking at this YouTube, anyone, when people say, oh, I can make that. You're right. You can make a YouTube video. You can report on the news I just did. Um, you could do whatever. But I, as I always tell people, like when you think it's so easy, one, you're, you're not me. So your opinions and what you have to say on things, like even this podcast, we all have different opinions. Um, so we, we like, also did. They also didn't build an audience. And yeah, that's exactly. The most part. Exactly. Just um, going through all that crap first before you get to the easy stuff, folks, yeah. the quote unquote easy stuff. And this is what yep. upsets me actually about, um, you know, if you look at this original topic about that that policy change, is that let's bring it all back? Yeah, yeah. just bring. I'm just bringing it right back because <laughs> because. This all started by, by talking about you. Know, people say, oh, just go buy the games or just go do this. Like people complaining about, oh, why why are you complaining about this? Because when you're looking, at, when you're a YouTube creator, and like to me, this policy change doesn't affect me today mm-hmm. at all. But it affects my my growth plan on where I was looking to get. Your goals. Yeah. yeah so absolutely. like, like that, that's the thing. When, when you start out on YouTube, you have where you start. And where you want to be. And, and some people be like, oh, well, we don't care where you That's fine. You don't care where you're going to go. That's fine. You're, you're going to make your videos when you have time. And that's what that is totally fine. I don't care about money. Yeah. And, yeah. That's the thing. Like, I don't care. Like, like, I put six videos out, you know, yesterday. I mean, you, should, about, you shouldn't try to get rich, but. Yeah, you know, no, no. Yeah, don't look money at it. Is, money yeah. sure is nice, though. Yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's just, it's tough because that, that policy change. And it, it impacting me sucks because I'm a Nintendo YouTube channel. I'm not the Wolf Den. I'm not uh, even Game Explain, who doesn't, uh, even though they only do Nintendo content, they're not named after Nintendo, right? Right. They could shift, they could slowly shift their content if they want to and probably still retain, you know, a good chunk of their audience and build a new audience for something else. Mm-hmm. Or yeah, this a whole affects you the most. Like, I am literally Nintendo's in my name, which that's my fault. I understand. I'm not, I take full responsibility <clears throat> for not just naming my channel after myself or whatever, like a lot of people do. And then mm-hmm. I can do whatever I want. I could have movie reviews. Like, I love new Star Wars movie coming out. I'd love to talk about that. It's not yeah. relevant to our channel. <laughs> um, watched yeah. your guys' conversation on the trailer. That was awesome. Um, oh, thank you. Even though that stream was all busted up. Oh, it was all, it was a big mess. <laughs> but even like the, the stuff that performs well on our channel is the Nintendo stuff because people like associate us with that now. But, you know, I, I want to, I don't want to be pigeonholed. Yeah. And, and I'm okay being pigeonholed, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my, right. for me, it almost, well, you're all in. You're, yeah. you're, you're I'm all good. in. I'm all in. That, and it, I spent, you, you kind of have to pick a niche sometimes. Yeah. I spent 18 you know? years covering Zelda games. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> You at least run your eyes in there. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's why it's like, oh, when I did Nintendo Prime, at the time when I when I invested and did everything in there, I was like, well, this already feels like I lifted everything because I get to talk about more than Zelda finally. <laughs> but now yeah. I was like, doing this, it's like, oh, there's some other things I'd like to talk about. But that's the thing. Um, I know I, I've said this in the past. Uh, I'm going to start a second channel someday. It's going to happen. Um, I'm a big tech enthusiast. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big, you know, comics. I, I like movies. There's all these things, other things I want to talk about that aren't Nintendo. But the big thing when you're running like a Nintendo thing and you get like a policy like this that majorly impacts you, um, it sucks because I'm not, I don't want to be game explained, right? Like some people say, oh, you're not game explained. You're, you're right. I'm not game explained. I want to be yeah, game explained. Yeah, I'm Nintendo Pro. I, I have no interest in that. Like, do you ever see those guys on camera? No. That's not what they are. They're voiceover over gameplay mm-hmm. and live streams. And, right. Yeah, I mean, that's what they do. They preview games. They show you games. And it's great. That's awesome. That's what they do. Do I have have ideas that were crossed over with some of that? Sure, because I wanted to preview some games too. But I wanted to bring to you, I wanted to bring the discussion to you. I wanted mm-hmm. to bring people together to talk about this stuff. Like, oh, Wolf well, then got to play the demo of Super Mario Odyssey. Well, it'd be cool if I if I played it and 
uh, you know, if Nathan over there played it and if Eric played it, we could all have a conversation about the demo. But we haven't all played right. it. At least because I know I haven't played it. And sure yeah, I haven't played it. Um, I have not played it, no. Yeah, see? Well, one for one for four. Uh, <laughs> I, I got like 10 minutes at E3. That was that was my... Hey. Hey, at least you I, waited on, I waited online for three hours. <laughs> and then on the last day, I found out that they had a media lounge. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but so, I don't know yeah. if that would have done anything anyway. Yeah, we, we went two years ago... Uh, Rep, Eric and I representing Zelda Informer, and uh, when it was the Breath of the Wild E3, um, yeah, the three hours oh, in line. Right. There were some days we waited like four, four and a half hours in line. And the thing is, we actually had a they call it a booth tour scheduled, and you get to play the game at the end of the tour, anyways. Mm-hmm. But this is what sucks about was this like, last year. This was last year, two right? years ago. Oh yeah, it would have been last year. The, last year, the, the Breath of the Wild one. Yeah, yeah it would have been last that. year. Yeah, sorry, two E3s. Because um, I I didn't wait online. I just did the booth tour. Yeah. Well. It, it was awesome because it's just Zelda, um, yeah. and we're there for Zelda Informers. So, like, yeah, we have the boot tour, but of course we're going to keep playing the game over and over and over again because that's why we're there. Yeah, um, right. You, but you like, guys got, you know. And it was, like, the perfect E3 for that because it was the only oh, yeah. game Nintendo yeah. had. Um, right. But it also, it's like, well, now that I'm Nintendo Prime, it's like, okay, yeah, I could schedule a boot tour, but am I going to get time with every game? Of course not. Yeah. Not going to happen. Um, Do you mind if I uh, if I segue a little bit here yeah. into um, this is something that I actually wanted to talk about to begin with. Yeah, let's um, go for it. it um, <clears throat> this policy change actually affects me as well um, as a consumer, because one of the big reasons that I got Breath of the Wild at launch and got a switch at launch, um, I was actually going to wait. Um, even though myself and my wife are huge Legend of Zelda and Nintendo fans. Um, I mean, I have Breath of the Wild. I got it at launch. Um, and, um, I mean, everybody else was having a hard time getting it, but, you know, we got lucky and we got to switch with, uh, Breath of the Wild, you know, at launch day. Um, and literally as my wife was walking out, uh, this lady almost mugged it for her grandson. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Gotta love um, consumers sometimes. Oh, yeah. But uh, the reason that we decided to get it at launch was because we seen the review, you know, it's like some of the review copies and stuff like that. And, and Breath of the Wild, the, the content that Nintendo was pushing was like, this game is going to be huge. And mm-hmm. it is huge. But... Um, I seen a lot of other people doing reviews and stuff like that of the game and it, and, and um, like pre-release content um, that was like, well, the game is kind of, you can break it into bite sized chunks because for me, I work two and a half hours away and uh, I make that commute every day uh, oh. there and back. And um, I don't have a lot of time. So, I, I felt like Breath of the Wild was something that I just couldn't get into. I just did not have the time to get into. I mean, I get two hours a night um, to, to, to program, to, to work on our games, to, um, you know, hang out with my family, to eat. I mean, two hours, literally, a night, um, if that most of the time, if I'm putting in overtime. So Breath of the Wild felt like it was way too big and unwieldy for someone with my you know, with, with my, you know, with my lifestyle. And, um, but I was able to see people, you know, break it, you know, break, break it up and and really be able to focus. And, um, I, you know, I got all the way through the game. I mean, I didn't 100% it of course, but Mm -hmm. you know, on my schedule, I managed to get through breath of the wild. So. Yeah. And that's the thing that I think people, uh, fans that, that, that don't care about it. Here's the thing. There are the fans out there that are buying these games anyways. Right. (laughs) Um, all the fans that are going to buy Super Mario Odyssey anyways, guess what? When I make that preview content, it's not for you. Um, yeah, you're, 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 it's for people who are on the fence. Yeah, right? Because there are people on the fence. I, yeah. As much as you might think, how could you be on the fence about this game? Because there's multiple reasons to be on the fence about games you might not be thinking about. I know people yeah. who, who, were, who were crapping all over the Switch until it came out, and then they all bought it, and now it's the best <laughs> thing ever. Yeah, I mean, Those people who only bought it for Zelda, now, <laughs> now you have Super Mario Odyssey coming out, they might not know if they want it. I mean, believe it or not, um, if it wasn't for Nathaniel's um, review of Snipper Clips, I wouldn't have bought that. Did I actually review that? I, I believe so, you did. I you I, talked I, I about did it. Tweet at Nintendo that. Tell him it's because this guy give him money. <laughs> I did. 
I know I did a video on snipper clips. You did something on it. And yeah, I, I wasn't know. I, I pick did, it up until you did. It was one of the first gameplay videos I had ever put up. Actually, I know yeah. that there, there was of snipper clips. Um, I can't remember. So maybe we've done two reviews. I have to go back and you, look. I don't. I remember the video. A, I can't remember. If it was yeah, I. That. Yeah, I don't. It might not have been a review, but I remember. I remember it was you specifically. Um, but me and my wife got lots of enjoyment out of that game. Yeah. Um, oh, that was my and, experience with that. I wanted to share because I always thought Snipper Clips was really cool, you know. But yeah, um, playing it with my girlfriend. Fiance. That was the video. That was exactly it, the reason because you were playing it with your fiance. It was just a totally I, different experience. Yeah. Oh, it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I think I said something like it's the perfect date game. Yeah. You want to date, oh, date with your girlfriend yeah. and play some games, even if she doesn't Absolutely. play games. Get her, give her, hand her one of those Joy Cons, play some Snipper Clips, and tell it's addicting. It's fun. It's the, the characters are goofy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember. I don't know if I did a review, but I remember. I was so surprised because that was after yeah. one night. We we literally we planned to play like I could hardly ever get her to play games with me. Uh, but I said, "Hey, look, I got this game on Switch. Um, it's kind of I, I think you're gonna like it, and I think it's gonna be more fun in multiplayer because you can play it single player, but uh-huh. it's a little difficult." Uh, so I said, Let, "Let's play it together to see if you like it. I know you kind of like puzzle games on your phone a little bit. Um, let's just play for a little bit before we go to bed." We didn't go to bed for like four hours. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I actually was so tired uh, at, at work one day because me and my wife was we you know we're up playing uh, snipper clips. But uh, yeah, I mean th- I, that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Like if I if it wasn't for Nathaniel talking about that game and and bringing it to me in a way that I could relate to exactly and appreciate. I wouldn't have purchased the game. I literally wouldn't have. Yeah, that, that, that's that's why uh, review scores are not not indicative of how much you're going to enjoy the game. Yeah, I don't care about the review score. I actually at all. think that's why uh, YouTubers that do reviews have actually blown up so much um, yeah. in comparison could, to could, traditional media because you have to watch the whole video, and even if they have a score, the score doesn't feel like it matters by the time you get to it. Mm-hmm. A lot of times you grow with somebody else's tastes too. Like yeah. you'll know, yeah. like oh, I I I know exactly what Nathaniel likes is what I also like. So if he likes this, yeah. I'll probably like it too, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I I mean I have to temper that too because I like a lot of what Angry Joe likes, but like <laughs> um, not everything. There's some no, no. Actually, um, I mean his his review of Skyrim, I would completely disagree with. Sure, I had a completely different experience with yeah. um, you know, but. A game that's you know a game like Breath of the Wild. He and I you know agreed on a lot of the points for for Breath of the Wild. Well, yeah, um, you know, the Total War series. You know, sure. it's. I, I, I would say it's more often than not, but yeah. still, I you still got to temper it. You know, yeah. Uh, the, there's no reviewer. But put it this way: we're all individuals. Mm-hmm. There's not a single reviewer out there, even if you've agreed with every review they've ever done, that uh, you're going to ab- end up agreeing with everything. Um, that's just not, like with you. You said specifically it was how I described it in terms of playing snipper clips yep. uh, with my girlfriend. And so, like, you might not agree with everything I have to say, but if I'm going to talk in the future about another game I play with my girlfriend and my experience with it, that's something you might be able to connect with again. Uh, because exactly. you know that you know that my experience in the past ended up translating to you in that way. Uh, but that's just in that specific thing. Like, what I have to say about, say, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to have absolutely nothing to do with a game like Snipper Clips. It's to- two completely different types of games. Exactly. And and I, I feel that's why it's so important to have many people that have access to these games. Like, yes. I mean, you know, it's... It, it, they're they're only thinking from the fact that oh God, you know it, it's this or that but um you know it, it, it's my coworker has this thing um that he says all the time um if you look at thing something from one way um always turn it upside down and see if it still works sure. that's and, an art if, if, if you're drawing something you mirror it and see if it still looks good yep Absolutely. And um, and I think that's a lot of a lot of the decision that went into this whole thing with the Nintendo of America, you know, kind of removing the whole uh, review copy thing that hurts them in more ways than they than they realize. Because it, it like I said, if Nathaniel had not bought that snipper clips and played it with his fiance, I would have never purchased it. 
Yeah. And you, and you wonder, you know, how many other people, even with me or, or anyone, or even Bob over there just talking about something, he doesn't review games. And, and like I said, maybe it wasn't a review, but I just talked about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And that and that, that's like the big thing I want to do. Not so much the reviews. I mean, I'll still do them if we hit that stretch goal. But what I want to do is, is that conversation and sharing experiences. And that, to me, is what YouTubers really excel at over, say, a text form. Like, you could still Absolutely. get traditional print media, could still share experiences. But it comes through better when you can hear, like, the passion and the emotion in the voice mm-hmm. or see body yep. language. Um, you tell if someone's actually just talking out their butt to get a paycheck <laughs> or if they right. actually mean what they're saying. Yeah. Well, um, you know, it's not just that, too, is we we as a society will hold people up on a pedestal. Mm-hmm. So when you're seeing... You know, when you're, you when when I saw Jimmy Kimmel playing Breath of the Wild, that did nothing for me because I mean, I could tell that he was legitimately um, excited about it. But exactly what level of excitement did he actually have? I don't know what, what part, you know, how much of that was put on. Put on. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How much of that was an act and how much of that was, you know, was real. And with a YouTuber, you you can kind of like, you know, that these people probably didn't have acting classes. These people, you know, aren't acting for a career and blowing things up for a career. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> you can kind of I mean, some people do. Jake I mean, Paul. but the, you know, I mean, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But I mean, you know that uh, those kinds of channels go big and then go go away real quick. Um, I've I mean I've I've been on YouTube a long time and I've seen that happen to so many people. I mean, look at what happened with Leafy. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Um, I you know how I know it's time to move on to our next topic. Somehow in the first topic about changing Edaway's pol- policies, we've talked about PewDiePie. We've talked about <laughs> Leafy now. Leafy well, just got yep. brought up, um, and we yep. <laughs> and we talked about, or at least had a, a brief mention of Jake Paul. Who um, else can we piss off? Who else? <laughs> right. <laughs> Who else? That Jim Sterling guy. Let me tell you. Oh yeah. man, I love Jim I love Sterling. <laughs> Dude, his commentocracy videos are so funny. Oh, yeah, man, I love those, that stuff. Now, so, oh, every God. time I see a every time I see a, a Jim Quisition, I'm just oh. like, oh man, who is who is Jim gonna piss off? <laughs> who's today? who's getting roasted today? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's just hope this ban is temporary. Yeah. Thing. I mean, so. as as I said, this tier thing. When I heard about that, I'm like, I know they've done it in the past. Uh, just to give you one example before we move on, uh, we got Skyward Sword at uh, Zelda Informer three weeks early. Uh, technically it ended up being two weeks early because the first copy got, you know, quote unquote lost in the mail. Uh, so the, a- the air, air mailed one, us one after they realized, Oh, you really didn't get the copy. Did you I'm like, no, I didn't. Um, but then we got, uh, I can't remember. It, it was either spirit. No, Ocarina of time 3d. Uh, we got one week early spirit tracks. We got like the same day it came out. So right. that, that, I mean, literally there's the tier system right there working. So they've had this around yeah. for a while. Um, now, yeah. how that and, applies and, to the ambassador program, I have no idea because I've never been in the ambassador program. But right, and like I said, I mean, like I said at the beginning of this, everything that is old becomes new again at some point. Yeah.